Let's have a sesh on MPV, sometimes called net present value. Let's get straight into So the best way to explain ARR, NPV or payback or even sensitivity analysis is to use real numbers. So for all of those videos, I'm going to use the same numbers for continuity and we're going to have two projects, project one and project two. And each project is going to last four years. One, two, three, four. And each of those projects has a cost. A hundred is going to be the cost of project one and a hundred is going to be the cost of project two. Now we see here for each of those projects, there are net inflows to the amount that they expect, they forecast, that they will generate in inflows in the future. So we have here net inflows for project one of 40 in year one, 40 in year two, 50 in year three, and 10 in year four. And the same on the other side, 60 in year one for project two, 10 year two, 10 year three, and then a big inflow in year four of 80. Now let's calculate the MPV for these numbers. So based on the numbers we used for payback and also for average rate of return, we're now going to use those same numbers to calculate the net present value, the NPV. Before we do that, we need to understand what the time value of money is, TVM. And all time value of money is, is that an identical sum of money is worth more today than it is in the future. A million pounds is worth more today than it is in the future. The reason why is because you have earning potential on that money. For instance, you could stick it in a bank account, in a risk-free bank account and earn interest on it and it will be more in the future. So that is really the underlying principles of discount factors is that they're based on interest rates. So discount factors will be given to you in the exam. You need them to be able to calculate the NPV. If you're interested in how to calculate them, I'm just going to go through them quite quickly. So discount factors in year zero will always be one. Discount factors in um, year one, based on an interest rate of 10%, would simply just be one divided by that interest rate, which is 0.1 plus one. And you do that to the power of the year you're in. We're in year one. So that means that discount factor based on 10% in year one would be that. If you want to get the discount factor in year two, you just do one divided by the interest rate, which is 10% plus one, and then do that to the power of the year you're in. We're in year two. And the third one would be one divided by the interest rate, 0 0.1 plus one, and then do that to the power of the year you're in. So three, and the last one would be one divided by one plus the interest rate, all to the power of the year you're in, so four. So that's how you calculate discount factors. You don't need to know that, but you'll be given that in the exam. But it's good to understand the underlying principle behind them being the time value of money, and it's essentially the interest rate that you forecast that is affecting those discount factors. Now, when you're calculating MPVs, what you need to do is get your table looking nice. So we've got, in terms of columns, we've got year zero, one, two, three, four, the expected returns in each year. And all we have to do is just adjust these expected returns for the discount factor. And that will give us what's called the present value. How we do that, we take firstly the cost of the investment. So the cost of investment was 100. We're paying that today, so we don't have to discount against that. So it's just simply going to be minus 100, minus because it's you're paying it out, it's the cost of investment, times by one, so it's minus 100. And now in year one, we're going to get an expected return of 40. But remember, 40 in one year is not the same as 40 today. So we just need to discount that back for the interest rate. And the discount factor is 0 0.9 and a lot. So we just times that number, 0 0.90909, times that by 40, and it comes to, not that, what happened? It comes to 36.36, and then we just repeat that process down. So 40 times by that discount factor, and then 50 times by that discount factor, and 10 times by that discount factor. So when you want to calculate the net present value, all you need to do is add the present values, including the costs, add them all together. So we're just going to put the sum here and we come to 13.81. If the number is positive here, that is good. It means you 
have it makes sense to go ahead with that project. If the number is negative, then it does not make sense to go with that project. And if the number is zero, then you don't really know and you need to look into more qualitative factors. But the key thing is when you look at net present value, the number needs to be positive to mean the project makes sense. So it looks like project one makes sense. Now let's just rinse and repeat for project two. So we've got the discount factors in place and we just need to calculate the expected return each year and then just adjust it for the discount factor. So if we just adjust those each for the discount factor, then we then we add these all up and it comes to plus 24.96. So again, that is a positive number, which is exactly what we want for net present value. And if we really look into it, the NPV is higher in project two than in project one. So we should be going with project two. You want to go with the higher NPV, but it has to be positive to make sense. Now let's look at the pros and cons. So in terms of the pros of net present value, well, it takes into account the time value of money and that's critically important because it looks at what that money is going to be worth. Those future cash flows are really worth. You don't see that in ARR. You don't see that in payback. So that's a massive advantage of net present value. Also, you just know if the number is positive at the end, if the NPV comes out positive, then that means that you should accept the project. And if it is negative, you should reject the project. So it's quite easy, much like payback. The disadvantages of NPV is you're only as good as those forecasts, and there are lots of forecasts involved. The forecast of the project costs, like in ARR, like in payback, you're only as good as how much you estimate that to be. Also, all those inflows in the future, they are simply estimates, like in ARR, like in payback, so you're only as good as them. But the final thing with your forecasts is the interest rates, as we saw earlier on, they will change what the discount factor is. So if you get the forecast wrong on the interest rate, that means the discount factor would be wrong. And if the discount factor is wrong, then that means the cash flows, the present values will be wrong. So I hope that helps. And I'll see you at the next sesh.